Hi, Sarah. We, we saw your video about your horse that just totally takes over and ignores you. And you said you're not a trainer and you're not maybe an advanced horseman or anything like that, but what's happening is pretty simple. You see, you see that with kids all the time on ponies. You know, you put a, you'll have a pony that's quiet enough. He's, he's not gonna buck you off or anything, but he's just not gonna listen to you. So when he's had enough of what the kid wants him to do, He's just going to push through the reins and walk over and have something to eat or maybe have something to drink. And if he gets tired of the kid riding him, he's going to lay down and roll and the kid's going to have to get off. So it sounds to me like what your horse is doing is very similar to what a kid's pony would do. In the nicest way possible, I'm going to, I'm going to have to tell you that you're going to have to dig deep a little bit and you're going to have to be a little more assertive on that horse to where... When you ask that horse to do something, he doesn't think it's up to the debate. It sounds to me like he thinks that when you suggest that you go on a certain direction on a trail, that he lives in a democracy, and if he doesn't want to go, he doesn't need to go. He can vote on it and ignore you. So you have to change, change his mind. So you have to make your idea his idea and have him understand that it's, it's not up for debate. When you're going to ask for something, you're going to get it. So... Uh, in a safe spot I wouldn't suggest starting a lot of this stuff when you're out riding around or trying to ride out in the hills by yourself but in a safe spot in the arena what I might do is I might try to be riding that horse in straight lines to where you would maybe pick a target in your arena and you'd look at it you focus on it and you'd ride him straight to that target and in using you're gonna use all the aids you have to get him there you're gonna use your feet and your seat and your body and you might even have a crop in your hand to where you might spank on him a little bit to get him going straight. By the sounds of what you're telling me, he's an ex-reigning horse. So I would think he'd be pretty, pretty responsive, or he had been at one time, pretty responsive to your feet and your reins. But horses kind of rise and fall to the people or the situation that they're in. So you can have a very nicely broke horse with someone that maybe is green is green mm -hmm. that would dull them out and uh, he might be pretty dull to those aids so you might have to remind him a little bit about hey when I've got a leg on you that means I want you to move off that leg or when I'm gonna rein you or I'm gonna pull your nose around to go somewhere that's the direction you've got to be so there, there's no real easy solution to it other than there's a simple solution, but how easy it is is kind of up to the individual. You're gonna to have to dig deep and be as firm as you need to be. So, in, uh, in simplest terms, you're gonna to need to have a plan. You're gonna to need to lay the plan out for your horse to where he needs to go from A to B, and he needs to understand when you ask him to go, he's gonna go. And this can start with groundwork as well. Like, don't let your horse push you around on the ground. Well, that's, you know what, on, on, on any of these situations that Shelby was just saying about the groundwork, I, that's where I would start. Mm -hmm. I, if you'd brought me that horse and you were telling me this is the problem on him, I'm not just going to get on his back, kick the heck out of him. I'm going to get on, I'm going to get him on the ground and I'm going to get him responsive to me, to the language that I'm giving him, the life of my body and the direction I'm offering him. I'm going to introduce it to him on the ground and then he's going to have some background with me when I climb on the saddle if I could, if I have that horse understanding on the ground that I have the ability to control his feet he's a herd animal and I am an alpha in his herd he's going to be way more responsive when I get on his back than if I just climb on his back and say hey I'm the boss mm -hmm. so the reason for the groundwork is to set up that relationship with the horse so he understands who he's dealing with and this isn't about being brutal. There's a difference between being hard and being firm. I'm talking about being firm to where my horse understands that when I ask for something, I will follow through and I have the ability to get what I'm looking for. And uh, that can be different to different people, but you've got to dig deep and you've got to come up with the, the, the courage and the will to do what it takes. But doing the groundwork would be where I would start it. And then, like I say, go in an arena set up like that to where I can ride him from point A to point B and then some point B to point C 
with no argument. Once I have that in a good, safe environment, then I would be going out and, and getting it outside. And when I go to get it outside like that, I, I take somebody along with me as well, another rider that can kind of fit in and help me out as needed. But I'd, I'd see no reason why this can't be overcome.